sit down. We've been talking about how other countries are creating stuff. and they're even duplicating some. And you talked about how a lot of the supplements that you find have the exact same ingredients, yet they're not, one's not as effective as the other. Yeah. How can that be? Well, first off, it, it, it would seem like the industry would be regulated enough where we yeah. could control this, but it's just not. So, let me give you an example. This is a, you, everyone's heard of ginseng, right? Well, I, this was about 15 years ago. This epiphany came to me, and, and, it, and I realized it from one of the, the guys who founded one of the top nutritional supplement companies in the, in the industry. And he was one of the few guys that really knew and understood the behind the scenes world. And he told me the story, and here's, here's what it is. For years and years and years, we were getting ginseng imported from China into this country. And in the very beginning when ginseng came in, they would show pictures of what they called the man root and it looked like a, almost like a little person and they talk about how it's grown in the mountains of China and all these incredible stories you know, about ginseng. Well, this was very valued and prized in China. So what the Chinese were doing was they were taking all their ginseng roots and they were shaving the hairs because they have these little rootlets and hairs that are on the root when they pull it out of the earth and they would shave those rootlets and hairs off and they would make ginseng powder out of that and they would sell it to us unsuspecting Americans and they did that for years and then finally as technology caught up and we were able to do the things that, that I find so valuable today, which is now you can look into a plant, you can determine what the active ingredients are, and you can take out those active ingredients in the same ratio that it was contained in the plant, and now you've got a true natural medicine, you see? Ginseng, most of the value of ginseng, especially what we take ginseng for, is because it helps to uh, build up your energy and build up your strength and build up resistance and build up immunity. Well, all of those good active ingredients are contained in the body of the plant, not in the rootlets and the hairs. And the Chinese would be sitting over in China going, why do these Americans want this rootlet and hair thing? All the time going, yeah, and we're not giving them the valuable part of the ginseng because we want it for ourselves. And if they're dumb enough to take it, we'll just ship it over to them. So all these years, people were getting sold this story about how fantastic ginseng was, and the actual raw material didn't have any of the value in it. It turns out that the rootlets and the hairs, they have very little active ingredient. But it was the technology that we were able to uh, develop so that you could look into these plants and find these active ingredients. Finally, they did that on ginseng, and they realized where the, it's not just the, um, the, the value of the plant itself. You gotta know where in that plant is this value. Because sometimes, like blueberries, you've, all, you've heard that blueberries are great, the fruit, the blueberries, because they have uh, antioxidant in them called anthocyanidins that help with the eyes. And they, But guess what, the blueberry leaf has compounds in it that helps with diabetes. You gotta understand plant biochemistry, you know, and where all these raw materials come from. More importantly, you've got to understand your supplier. If you don't know who that supplier is, and you don't have a track record with them, and you don't understand quality yourself, you can literally be this much of a difference. Uh, raw materials are sold in kilos, kind of like cocaine, right? That you, it's a, it's a, uh, that's the international measure. So you buy your ginseng or your rhodiola or whatever in a kilo amount when you're going to put it into a supplement. The difference between a kilo of quality ginseng and a kilo of rootlets or hairs that are coming out of China could be the difference between $1,000 for a kilo and $100 for a kilo. Ten times. Nobody. Nowhere. What if the auto industry or a big industry could reduce their cost by ten times? Not ten percent. Ten times. Do you see? So you see the incentive is so strong to use the junk and not use the quality. And that's where I, what I was saying before, we have to sacrifice incredible opportunities in other markets in order to stay focused on what we do so we can give women exactly what it is that they need because the quality cost in many instances 10 times more to be able to do it.